So there are two views in this fiber cables I am showing you. One is the side view of the single fiber. Here we are, we are showing a top view you can say. Inside a sheath or a protective sheath, there are three fiber, three different fibers. So fiber optic cables, they are almost similar to the coaxial uh, cable, but they don't have the braid that the that is the net netted uh, braid protective sheath of uh, the metal and the cloth. So the core is surrounded. The, the center is the core glass where the light propagates. And above this core, we have uh, it is surrounded by a glass cladding. And the mu that is the refractive index is lower than the glass core. Right? Because we want total internal reflection. Then we have the thin uh, plastic jacket to protect the cladding. And then we have these grouping of uh, in the bundles. So fiber are grouped in bundles and there is an outer protective sheet. That is how it is protected. So I'll just show you a picture here. See. How do we lay these fibers? Because this is an expensive and very, you can say, skilled task. So if it is terrestrial, just lay it down one meter. If it is near the seashore, then transoceanic fiber sheets, these are buried in trenches and there is a special, uh, you know, sea plow which does it like this. It, it looks. This is how uh, in the uh, trenches means uh, a kind of you can just dig a hole, long hole and then you can put. In the deep water, they just lie on the bottom, just lie on the bottom. Fibers can be connected in three different ways. So what are the three different ways? The first you see in the picture, we can have connectors. So they can terminate in connectors and that can be plugged into fiber sockets. So these are these connectors I'm talking about. This is the easiest and the best way. Not best way, easiest. I, I'll tell you why it is not best. Because the, the connector will lose 10 to 20% of the light. This is very a reconfigurable system, easy, but the loss is higher. Second one is it, they can be spliced mechanically. This is a machine you see also. The mechanical splices lay two carefully cut ends next to each other in a sleeve and then clamp them. You can just clamp them. So 10% light loss is there as against 20% in the first one. The third is fusing the two fibers together. So two pieces of fiber. They are fused and melted to form a solid connection. This is how they are melted. There are certain things also in this. Uh, you can get some bubbles, but it's, it will be like seamless connection. A fusion spice is almost as good as a single drawn fiber. So there are two kinds of light sources because you know light is very important here. All, all, all is about light. So there are two kinds of light sources for signaling. First is the LED, light emitting diode. And the second one is semiconductor lasers. This is the laser. This is a single mode laser. And this is for gigabit Ethernet long wavelength. Here you see VCSEL, vertical cavity surface emitting laser. Okay. So this is for gigabit Ethernet short wavelength. And the above one, of course, you see the light emitting diode. Uh, we have also showed the core and the spot size. So we, do, we are not going to the detail of this, just to have an idea. Now they can be tuned in wavelength because the wavelength has to be tuned because if the uh, everything is about light, the total internal reflection, everything is dependent on light. So this, uh, they can be tuned in wavelength by inserting certain interferometers. It can be Fabry Parrot or it can be Max Ender interferometer. And this has to be placed between the source and the fiber, the source and the fiber. So how does it work? The Fabry Parrot interferometer. These are simple resonant cavities consisting of two parallel meters. You see these two, two mirrors, one, two, and the light is incident perpendicular to the mirrors. And the length of the cavity selects out wavelength that fit inside an integral number of times, m, m minus one, m minus two, so integral number of times. We're not going into the detail again, I'm saying just to give you an idea. Then the max ender, it separate lights into two beams. You see here a uh, beam uh, splitter, the two beams travel slightly different distances and they are recombined at the end and are in phase for only certain wavelengths which we want, which we want to be tuned in. 
So there are two fabric ferret and the Mac Zender. These are interferometers. Now the receiving end, what will be there? There has to be a photodiode. So the receiving end of an optical fiber, it consists of a photodiode and which gives the electric pulse whenever a light strikes it. So the response time of photodiode, which converts the signal from optical to electrical domain, it limits data rates to about 100 Gbps. Okay. Now you know the first discussion we had, why we are limited to 100 Gbps? Because of this.